Build Show Network. Steve Basic Architect here. I'm out here at our Riverside project. You can see over there. And uh, this week we are on site and we are casting some footings. We got a lot to talk about right here before the concrete goes in. So let's take a walk over. These aren't your traditional footing forms. Traditionally, you'd see, you know, two by tens, two by twelves lining the footing two foot on center. The steel dogs would go across there. But in this project here, the concrete guy is using a product called Fast Footing by Fab Form. And basically what it is, is this heavy duty bag liner that basically you attach these two by sixes, they get steel stakes driven in, then they get nice and level all across, which is pretty easy to do, is then you just screw that in to the two by six. Two by six is nice and level. And then you can see here, it just simply stapled to that two by six. And it's a, it's a pretty sturdy, you know, you're not, you're not tearing that very easily. And it comes with preformed corners. So that all gets made up, set on top of it. And basically you have this kind of bagged flume here that is ready to accept the concrete. But we didn't stop there. We have our rebar in there and standard nomenclature. You can see here, these are rebar chairs. And the reason for the rebar chairs is basically to get the rebar off of the bottom of the form. The rebar handles all of the tensile forces or tension forces in the concrete. Concrete's really good in compression. Where it isn't good is when you put concrete in bending and you put tension on one side of the footing. So here, when the load is applied to the top, the footing wants to bend like this at the bottom. So we need to reinforce the bottom of the footing and you do that by inserting this steel. But the reinforcement really doesn't work unless I get the rebar fully encapsulated in the concrete. Now, you can see here, close inspection, see how that rebar has kind of a knurled edge to it. Well, that's not by mistake or because it's the easiest way to fabricate it. It basically increases the surface area of that dowel and it gives edges to the concrete. So as the concrete goes around it and cures, it basically grabs that. So you can imagine if that was a, say a, a straight piece of rebar that was just finely milled, and we played a tug of war on it, you really wouldn't have anything to bite or grab. But by having that knurled edge, you could grab that and really apply some force in your tug of war. So now the important thing is not only getting it that couple inches above the bottom of the footing, but here at the corner, we need our rebar to be continuous. And you can see it's continuous there, but it laps here. And that lap goes all the way down to here. And believe it or not, that lap is specified in the drawings. And it's about 30 inches um, for a number four bar. And for number five bars, I think the structural engineer let us go down to 24. But you can see that here too. So you need that lapping so that the forces that are being applied to the bar here can be transferred to the bar in the corner and then again transferred to the bar here that is running lateral. So if that lap joint didn't exist or we simply butted it, then you would have a weak spot where the two butt and at the risk of the concrete cracking. So that lapping is kind of bridging the area of concern or the area where the bars end. So next up, we have what we call our J-bars, and you can see those there. They have a bent leg down at the bottom, and there's, you can see this one here. And as we go down, you notice that they alternate left and right. So they alternate so that you're not putting 
pressure on the wall in just one direction, um, or solving for just one direction, whether the wall wants to lean in or lean out here, it pretty much wants to uh, lean in. But by alternating it, it gives us a nice consistent uh, connection to the bottom of the footing. Now, here we use a product called SteelMate. That's what these uh, rebar holders are. And they basically just grab onto a two by four and you can see they create this little elevated support there and basically run that two by four down And then those steel mates just get screwed in to the top there. And then the rebar just basically snaps in. So once the concrete is cast, they'll pop this whole assembly off and we'll just be left with that bar sticking out of the concrete footing. And we'll be able to tie that into our vertical reinforcement that runs up and down the wall system there. Um, next up is our steel dogs. So, Steel dogs are nothing more than these kind of frame displacement uh, reinforcing bars here. They're steel, you can see. They basically bite the two by six on each side. And what they do is they manage a consistent displacement of two feet, but they also, once we fill this with concrete, this footing is gonna wanna spread. So those steel dogs in, concert with these steel bars and spikes that are into the ground hold that whole system together and you can see those steel dogs there so it's a little background on the footing it looks like we uh, have some fun here that just pulled up you can see here so it's your standard concrete pump truck and uh, we should be getting some concrete here soon, so stand by. Moving further down the line, you can see here, come to an area where we have what's called a step footing. And a step footing basically and simply just allows for an elevation change in the footing. Now, what would require an elevation change in the footing? Well, our bottom of footing needs to be four foot minimum below grade, which is somewhere in there. And uh, you can see as we go around here, the grade significantly drops off here along the riverside. And if we kept that footing at the same height, we would be over here and we'd be about 16 inches below grade. So we needed to push that down. And the way you push the wall down is via stepped footing. So basically it's just a 90 degree bend in the footing that comes back out to a lower elevation. All the things we talked about already apply down there, but take a peek down here into the step. You notice in the step we have our J bar, but our horizontal bars, they go, they turn down and then they run into the lower footing. And we have a pair of those and you can see down below those turn. And our fast footing, that just goes and follows the slope down. We have our plywood end dam here. So we get a little bit extra concrete reinforcement in this area just by virtue of having more concrete. But basically the footing goes vertical for that two feet, three feet, and then comes out the other side and continues around. But that allows for that elevation change and that gives us a nice clean wall then to butt the new foundation wall up against and then we'll pick up our coursing and uh, go from there. So we get Dan here, he's got a nifty little tool here that basically twists the tie and uh, that's how you get the J bar wired to the horizontal bar. There's uh, another example of it right there. Concrete truck is here. I thought we'd run through a little logistics here. So how do we get concrete down in the hole down there? Well, you can see that nice flexible hose there. And it's attached to this nice long boom, goes into the truck. 
and you'll see here the back of the truck has this giant hopper so the concrete truck doesn't have to put it in the footing it just dumps all the concrete in that hopper the hopper has an auger and you can see pushes the concrete up the pipe up the boom and then we got our concrete guys down there moving that boom around and giving direction to the uh, concrete pump guy and basically just placing that concrete a few feet from uh, where it's going to go so let's get down in the hole there we are concrete my man arthur he's on the elephant trunk that's what they call the red hose here you can see there's a the little reducer and uh, concrete just flowing down into that step footing. Now what's interesting is, you see one of the guys here, he's got this contraption on his back. It's ba basically a large battery powered vibrator. Excuse me. And uh, he's vibrating the concrete down there, getting the air out of it. You see it's just flowing in there nice and neat. This guy's moving that concrete around. So there's a little science to this. You notice they basically run a little base, and that little base is just enough to uh, grab these J bars, kind of hold them in place, and then come down over the top of it. Make some minor adjustments there. But here, you know, you can see there how the concrete gets underneath the rebar and really bonds around it 360 degrees. So the concrete getting dumped down at the corner there. Got the guys vibrating it. This guy here doing some rough leveling out. Just kind of cleaning it up and organizing it. Enough for the finish guy. Comes along, screeds it, and then does a little bit of trowel work. And uh, you can see we get a nice finished top of footing. Nice and level. So, there you have it. Now, you just let nature take its course. Concrete cure. And uh, we'll come back another day and uh, check out the footings and uh, watch those walls go up. Anyways, Steve Bazek, Architect, live from the trenches for the build show at our Riverside Project.